Hey everybody, it is Art Prof Teaching Artist Deep D. Menon here, and I am joined by Art Prof Teaching Artist Kat Huang. Uh, hello everyone, thanks for being here. Today we are doing a Procreate Draw Along on Drawing Comics. If you are looking to strengthen and flex your art muscle, Art Prof is the community for you. We have tutorials, critiques, and more, and it's all for free. So Kat, would you like to give us a little rundown on what the prompt is for our comics and the rules and all of that? Sure thing, Deepti. So we're going to do a very basic instructional comic. And the prompt is how to prepare your favorite snack. Now we're going to do this step by step as instructional comics usually are, but there's a catch. You cannot have any keyboard symbols. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you look at a computer keyboard, you can't have any of those symbols. So that includes letters and numbers and punctuation. But I do want to highlight that arrows, they're okay. You can use arrows, but no other keyboard symbols. <laughs> so Deep D, do you have a favorite snack in mind that you want to illustrate how to prepare? I was thinking being the millennial New Yorker I am, <laughs> I would pick um, an avocado toast but with like um, a little bit of an oil, olive oil drizzle, some red onions and chili flakes to give it like a little extra. Unless we think that's too much, but I think I'm gonna go with avocado toast. Oh, that sounds cool. I mean, I love avocado toast too. Actually before this stream, Deep D and I clashed because we both wanted toast as our snack. <laughs> but I've decided to be the bigger person and choose a different <laughs> snack. So my snack will be just fried eggs on top of rice. So let's begin. I think for all instructional comics, you do need just like a list of ingredients or the list of items you need. Think of it like Ikea instructions. When you have an Ikea instruction, you usually have all the parts laid out for you to see, right? So for me, I need eggs. I'm going to draw that right now. Okay, so I should draw toast. Yes. No, you I need just ingredients for toast. So you need to draw bread. <laughs> Oh, you're true. Sometimes, yeah. Okay, I say I use bread and toast in, inter interchangeably, but yes, you're right. And mm -hmm. and we're, are we just drawing this like, like wherever on the page right now, not worrying too much about what the final comic page will look like? That's a good question. Yeah, you can just draw it wherever. And honestly, for these comics, they're going to need multiple passes. So whatever you're drawing right now won't be your final. You might draw something now and think, oh, I know a better way to show this. And then you'll have to like draw that in your comic final. So right now I'm just going to draw the ingredients, see if I draw them right, and then plan for my comic. After my plans are done, I'm going to draw the final comic. But everyone's process is different. I mean, some people will just like go straight for the final and you know, I respect that. <laughs> cool. So I am drawing. Some bread. And by the way, you can use color. Color is allowed. So I'm going to color my eggs brown. No. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. What am I doing wrong? Where's Jordan? Just kidding. Jordan, help. <laughs> And let us know in the comments, uh, what are your guys' favorite toast? Oh, not toast. <laughs> I'm like assuming everyone loves toast. Uh, snacks. What are your favorite snacks? What kind of snacks would you draw? I don't get what's going on. I'll have to ask Jordan about this problem later. I can't color drop it. It's okay. I'm a strong person. I can color it in. I'm a strong person. I can color it in. That should be on a t-shirt. <laughs> the prof merch. Okay, I have egg. This red, like, what is this red that I drew? It's, uh, why does it look like a tiger? It looks like red to me. <laughs> Next, I need olive oil because I need oil to fry my eggs, right? You we use have olive oil for your frying? Yes. 
Nice. We have a question from Amaris saying, I have a question about the list of contemporary comic book artists. How do we study them? Do we write summaries on them? Please help. <laughs> Whoa. I've never really thought about writing summaries for comics because usually I consume them for entertainment, but I've definitely like written papers and analysis analyses on comics before. But I think the best way to study comics is honestly enjoy them on a first pass and then read them for a second time and then notice technical things that the artist is doing or the author is doing that you could apply to your own comics. Ooh, okay. I'm on my first challenge here. How do I illustrate olive oil without any keyboard symbols? I am also doing olive oil. What does an olive branch look like? Oh yeah, that's a good idea. I drew like an olive. And I think if I colored it green with a red center, it might help that people might know what that is. What does an olive look like? Oh yeah, Oops. I just copied <sighs> your olive. I drew on the wrong layer. Are you doing each ingredient on a different layer? No, I did it on accident. Oh, okay. <laughs> so if I color it green, people will probably know that it's olive mm, oil. I'm gonna go for like a greenish yellow, like a olive color. <laughs> And Seven Angelic says, ice cream is a snack, right? Yeah, ice cream counts as a snack. Now, how would you prepare your ice cream? Is it an ice cream sundae? Do you put it in a cone? Do you eat it straight from the tub? I mean, an instructional comic for how to prepare your favorite snack could just be get a tub of ice cream, open it, have a spoon ready, and just scoop and eat it. <laughs> That's actually a really good point. Mm -hmm. Okay, hopefully people will think that's olive oil. Huh. I think it looks more like olive oil than mine does, so. Oh, no, I really like yours. Yours seems more like, uh, how do I say, artisanal olive oil, and mine seems like the kind you just get in bulk at Costco. <laughs> <laughs> Neftali says, my dad would bring me and my brother sugarcane and patties to snack after church service. Oh my gosh, I just tried sugarcane for the first time very recently because a neighbor dropped by and gave us some and i didn't expect it to be so juicy for some reason it's very it's delicious yeah it's great there's a place near where i live that does sugarcane juice Ooh, it's so sugar. yummy <laughs> all right i have my olive oil i need rice I need a bag of rice probably okay, i need an avocado mm. i'm realizing reference images would be helpful here that's true Blue Wolf Spirit says, cat, no red center. That's a pimento. Olive oil comes from just olives. Ooh, okay. That's a good point, Blue Wolf Spirit. I will just get rid of that red. <laughs> Our community is so useful. Yes. <laughs> Catch all of the errors. Uh... You know what? I was going to draw like a bowl of prepared rice with like chopsticks next to it as if to like show this is rice, right? But people that makes might sense. misunderstand it as like instant rice or something like that. So what I'm going to do is draw a full sack and then I'll draw an open sack next to it and you can see like the rice come out so people know for sure, okay, these are grains of uncooked rice. Something like that. Love it. Thank you. <laughs> All right. 
half of an avocado. And wow, I'm like, this is a lot of stuff already. Maybe I just should do salt and pepper and chili flakes. <laughs> yeah, I'm that's what I'll do. Salt, pepper, chili flakes. Oh, and then do we have to put all like our utensils in and stuff? Yes, you need utensils. I'm also okay. gonna put salt and pepper shakers so people know this is salt and pepper. That's what I'm about to do. Mm -hmm. We have a comment from Tom G that says, what is a good beginner platform hardware for digital art? I have never tried it. Hmm. I would not recommend getting Creative Cloud immediately, Cre Adobe Creative Cloud, <clears throat> because that's a subscription service. And I think, I'm not sure about the fees you have to pay there, but it's kind of expensive in my opinion. Yeah. But there are plenty of free art softwares like GIMP, or do you know any other free softwares, art softwares, DP? Uh, no. Did you say Procreate already? I didn't say Procreate, but- It's not free, but- You need an iPad. Oh, that's true. You're absolutely right. I feel like more people would have access to a laptop or a computer. Yeah. So definitely check out GIMP. Clara can probably put more suggestions in the chat. I can't think of them right now, but there are other options out there that you can start with. Salt and pepper. Frying pan, I need a frying pan. Maria says a lot of people's version of this comic, get hungry, panic, remember that you know people who can cook, ask for help in exchange for doing the dishes. <laughs> yeah, that's me. I would just go on Seamless. <laughs> I would give up and order some taco delivery. Tacos. Or go to a taco truck near me. My frying pan. My, um, what's that called? It's big spoon to flip fried eggs with. Spatula. <laughs> Spatula, thank you. <laughs> we have a question from Andrea that is saying, what are the best tools for traditional comic art for beginners? Kat, do you want to take that one? Comics can come in all kinds of mediums. So there is no universal tool for comics artists, but there have been tools that are used more often than others. So I would say you need pencil and paper. You probably need a ruler as well to measure out panels and stuff. And I would give a shot at different inking tools, just a basic black inking tool to get you started. So that could be a micron pen, or that could be nib pen that you have to dip into ink, in which case you can find plenty of nib options online. I use the G nib, which is what you use for manga. And for ink, I use always forget the name whenever I have to mention it. <sighs> Give me a second. PH Martins. That's the expensive brand. I suddenly cannot remember the ink I use. <laughs> Give me a second, I will remember it. But just, oh, and also online tools, like digital tools, such as Procreate or Photoshop or GIMP. Those are also really good tools to start with. Emily says, as far as traditional comics go, I feel like you can use just about anything, but you need a good scanner. I agree with Emily. Yes, you can use anything and you need a good scanner or take a very good quality photo uh, photograph and have some Photoshop tools at hand. Dang, I wish I had reference images right now. I'm like, what does my chili flakes look like? I mean, I'm going to Google rice cooker right now art prof is asking cat do you ever use non-photo blue pencils i don't but other people do there's no wrong way to draw comics <laughs> i just use a traditional pencil and and ink
Is there a reason you prefer that? It's just what I've started with and I haven't branched out to try the non-photo blue pencils yet. Also, yeah, based like on what, what you know. Yeah. But based on the video I watched on Art Prof that Casey Runin made about non-photo blue pencils, it's really hard to find the right one for you because a lot of brands have different kinds of non-photo blue pencils and I've just been kind of too lazy to find the right one for me. Mm -hmm. What does a chili flake look like? My goodness. <laughs> hmm, I have an idea. EJ is saying, for getting into digital art, do you recommend getting a Wacom tablet or do you think it's better to get an iPod, iPad or touchscreen laptop with a stylus? I've worked with both and I really like um, working on the iPad or like a Cintiq, which are surfaces that you draw directly on like we are now and not surfaces where you have to draw here but look on your laptop screen. I find that more intuitive coming from a background of drawing like traditionally, but um, what do you think, Kat? I agree with what you said, Deepti. Honestly, there are pros and cons to each of those tools. And there are plenty of articles online that explain the details on them. I personally don't know the details. I just happen to have both as a working artist. I just want to have multiple tools at my disposal. But for you, for starting out, I would just read up online which tool suits your needs. Okay, I think I'm done with my tools. Maybe I will go in and color it later, but let me just start. I feel like mine has a lot of steps, so I will just start with my comic. Oh, I haven't um, done any of my utensils yet. Okay, I'm going to do those quickly. My chili flakes don't look like chili flakes, but that's a problem for later. Okay, so I will just freehand draw a comic, and then whatever doesn't work, I will take note of that and do the changes in my final comic. Cool. Do, would you trace over the original one? Yeah, I would probably do something like that. Orange Cat Spirit's asking, what's a non-photo blue pencil? It's basically like a blue, special blue colored pencil that when you draw is a different color from your black inks and is therefore easier to Photoshop out when you want to just have a black and white final inked drawing. Whereas if you use a pencil, a normal pencil to draw your sketch and then you ink it, if you erase away the pencil, sometimes it leaves gray marks, which can still be picked up in Photoshop in the scanner. Okay, first thing I want to do is put my frying pan on high heat. So I'll draw flames coming out from here. Toaster. And draw my olive oil tipping out just a few drops of oil. I haven't made myself a snack in so long. I just eat pre-made snacks. I'm like, what do you need to make a snack? <laughs> All right, I think I have my ingredients. Right? That looks really cute, yeah. I think you're good to go. <laughs> I was going to put this bread in a bag. All right. So now you're drawing below the ingredients, Kat? Um, yeah. So it doesn't really matter where you draw them right now because these are just plans, probably. So once okay. I get... 
I think we also benefit from drawing digitally. So once it's finished, you can like move things around. But if you're drawing traditionally, you might want to just draw a sketch first, just figure things out. Got it. Alicia is asking, when I erase my pencils after inking the inks, the ink seems to fade. Is the problem my ink or am I just rubbing too hard? It's the ink and it depends on the ink. When you use Black India ink, that shouldn't be a problem. But if you use micron pens or markers or something like that, that ink is not as permanent as India ink. So it will fade if you erase too hard. So I'm trying to say that you have to turn on the stove to a high heat, but I can't oh. use keyboard symbols. So instead I have a big flame and a small flame. And cool. I will make sure that people know that this is on the high heat setting. Okay. So how specific are we going step-by-step? Step? Like, do I have to, are we assuming people are completely unaware of how to do this? Like, do I have to show them taking a piece of bread out of the bread bag? Or can we assume that the first step is you put a piece of bread in the toaster? That's a really good question. So people okay. who are reading comics do have a certain level of comprehension. And it's sometimes hard to gauge that comprehension. So if you want to just put a piece of toast, piece of bread into the toaster, I think most people will understand that. Okay. But if you want to be super sure, you can have the bread bag open right next to it. So people can see, oh, you took one slice out of the bag and you put it into the toaster. Oh, clever. Okay. Yeah. I like that. Another thing that you can do, which I'm not doing in my comic, is actually have the hands inside the comic. So have a hand grasp the olive oil bottle, pouring it. So maybe people understand, oh, that's the motion you need to do. Cool. I'm going to use the open bread bag thing that you said. Cool. I think for me, instead of using hands, I'm going to, maybe I will add hands. We'll see. But I'll use this like really bright pink to denote when an action is being made. So a bright pink as an arrow here and then a bright pink arrow here. Oh, so we can use arrows. I forgot that you said that. Okay, that's helpful. Oh Neil gosh, is asking, what age demographic is this for? Is it for kids or is it for Gordon <laughs> Ramsay? <laughs> I think we're aiming for... Kids. <laughs> less than Gordon Ramsay, for sure. Phew. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's my first step. I'll color it later. Next, an arrow to- Yeah, the I was gonna say like, is it even worth coloring it now for just planning and we might like scrap everything or like change it? Oh, that's true. Maybe it's not worth coloring right now, but since I'm doing it digitally, I think I have enough time to do it. So I am I was kind of worried here when I showed pouring the olive oil, how much exactly to pour. Because I'm like, I don't want it to be exactly a tablespoon of olive oil. Like, you don't have to be that precise. I just made it so it's a few drops and made it cover the bottom of the pan. Now, I think this would have been a totally different story if I showed this. Completely pour it. <laughs> and then a big amount of oil here. Like that's a very different amount of oil. So sometimes, I don't know, just like visual communication showing a few drops versus a stream of olive oil is already a big difference. Yeah, and I think you can also assume, like you were talking about, um, you know, who your audience is. I think you can assume hopefully that like most people know that if you're cooking rice, maybe you aren't, or, or sorry, you're cooking an egg, you aren't like 
submerging it in, like like basic understanding of yeah, your audience. Okay. Um, we have a question from Selvium. Is it better to start with a really big comic idea or try to make smaller ones and build up your skill? I think to build up your skill, you should start with smaller ones. But I'm not stopping you from doing a huge comic. I mean, some people just start on big comics and that's their careers just take off from there. You can take a lot of webcomic artists as examples. When they started their webcomic, their skill set isn't nearly as developed as five years down the line when they've continued the comic and developed their skills. So don't let don't let a professor like me stop you. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. But if you want to build up skills little by little, I think starting with a smaller comic is easier to manage. Okay, cool. I have my carton of eggs. One of the eggs in my carton is missing because I'm cracking it onto the very hot pan. Two dollar bills are real is saying I, I keep having ideas for these chapter long stories. I need to learn how to s simplify and start small. I uh, empathize with that about like animations that I am constantly like wanting to make. And they, I'm just like, I should think of something smaller because then I just get overwhelmed. I agree. Sometimes it's good to know when it's a losing battle or when it's too much to bite off. Yeah. But also don't limit your dreams. Yeah. Go for it. Go for it if you want to. There are baby, simple baby steps to get to a bigger thing, which you can also do. Mm -hmm. All righty. So I'm going to do what you did, Kat, and choose a bright color. Is that bright pink that you used like a um like a common color in comic making to no. it's not so common can... sorry go ahead so i could use kind of any color basically yes all right so the bread goes in the toaster You know what? After cooking the rice, will I then cook the egg? So whoops, I, sh I missed a few steps. I should probably show how to cook the rice first. Move that down. Okay. Uh, Nef oh, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Niftali says, would collage work for a comic? Absolutely. I have seen people work um, in collage for comics. They're students, so they're not known professional artists just yet, so I can't point you to anyone, but absolutely. Yeah, go for it. I think some of the most, <clears throat> excuse me, interesting kind of work that I see is when people mix media and like think outside the box, like doing collage for comic, which is something that's not often seen, but could be really cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have a question about instructional things. Is it worth, in this case, for example, when I'm showing like, okay, so you're putting the bread in the toaster and then you push the little button down, is it worth showing an after kind of, of like the bread in the toaster with some like steam coming out of it and the button that I'm showing to push down, down, or do we think that's too much? Do you mean, is it worth showing the results? The bread is toasted? No, like the bread in the toaster. Like, like here oh. I'm trying to show you, like, how do you get the bread in the toaster? And like, you push the button down, like I'm showing the actions. Like, do we want to show like, okay, now your bread is in the toaster and it's toasting. Yeah, I think that is a good idea to add. So you can just have the toaster here, right? The bread is in there. 
you can have steam showing it's cooking. Yeah. Over here, it's like slowly going up, right? Yeah. And then here's the problem with no keyboard symbols is how do you denote time? And what you can do is there's a clock, right? People recognize clocks, so have the proper amount of numbers on a clock. And then maybe you can just say five minutes, color it oh. in green or something. That's the amount of time you need. <laughs> cool. Okay. And you like that's how long you wait for your bread to be toasted, basically. Oh, nice. I think I may just copy exactly that. Cool. Two dollar bills are real is saying, do you guys have any favorite recs for webcomics? I don't know anything about comics, so cat all you. Oh, I have so many. I've read so many. I've read many bad ones. <laughs> I've also read plenty of good ones too. So one of the oldest web comics I've been reading is Hyperbole and a Half. It's actually a blog. And the lady who illustrates that now does books, but it's still up online. You can find Hyperbole and a Half online. A more recent web comic that I read is on the webtoons application and it's called cursed princess club <clears throat> and what i love the most about cursed princess club is that web comics are so accessible anyone can publish anything online and because of that we get web comics such as cursed princess club that can't be traditionally published in a publishing house because there are many barriers in a publishing house now when you look at prince at cursed princess club the art is I don't want to say it's like rudimentary, but it's definitely not the same kind of style you normally see in traditionally published comics. And I think because of that, it works as a web comic because it probably can't go past the barriers of a traditional publishing house. So those are two you can start off with. <laughs> I love that. It's kind of similar in animation where like having access to like platforms like Vimeo and stuff makes it so that anyone can animate in like whatever style and mm -hmm. publish these short films. And it's like really exciting and fun. And um, it again, doesn't have to be like something that a studio is producing because a lot of times studios want like a certain level of like refined look or narrative structure or something. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. Kind of cool. Mm -hmm. oh, there are so many steps in preparing rice. <laughs> it's funny. I was just thinking that I was like, I, I really was like trying to, when I was trying to think of my favorite snack, I was trying to think of something like really involved. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that I picked something not as much because it is taking a lot more time than I anticipated. I'm like, I'm still just on the bread. <laughs> When I was trying to come up with a prompt for this exercise, I thought, oh, we should we should have people prepare their favorite food. And I thought, well, what if someone's favorite food is a baked <clears throat> cake or something like that? And baking oh, yeah. is so specific. Like you need the exact amount of tablespoons, mm. teaspoons. You can't go wrong with those measurements. And it's really hard to show that without any keyboard symbols. So I thought, let's not risk it. Let's just say, prepare your favorite snack. <laughs> oh man, that looks like it's burning. I'm just gonna do some slight. And I'm like really not planning kind of where any of my things are right now on the page. I'm kind of just free doing it but like you said because we're digital i can kind of move things around later so mm -hmm. two dollar bills are real is saying poll for chat who cooks rice in a pot and who cooks rice in a cooker Let us i know. cook rice in a pot because i had to throw away my rice cooker but mm -hmm. it's so convenient cooking it in a cooker right i used to cook it in a pot because i was in college <laughs> and i didn't have access to a rice cooker so i used to Cook it in a pot. But now I have access to a rice cooker, so I just use a rice cooker. <laughs> I think for this particular step of preparing rice, I have to show someone taking the pot out of the rice cooker 
so I can show them pouring the rice into the pot and people understand what that is. I can't just have a pot appear out of nowhere and expect people to understand it's part of the rice cooker. Huh. Neil is saying, I'm trying to figure out different points of views to show a person making orange juice. It's harder than I expected. Yeah, it definitely is harder than you expect, which is why I like these iterations that you're right now, because I'm sure there are other ways mm -hmm. where we could show this that it might be that might might make more sense. But right. point of view is definitely something that I struggle with as well, Neil. I've given up and decided to actually draw the hand that's doing all the, doing everything. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I'd be able to do it without the hand, so. Hmm. I want to portray a measuring cup. And again, I can't have any keyboard symbols. So I just drew this like sort of cup-like shape and put the lines for the middle. Oh, yeah. So now people will know it's a measuring cup. Now people know one cup of rice. <laughs> yeah, that's convenient. Like a measuring cup generally has only one cup. Mm -hmm. So that's like an easy turnaround. Okay. So. Then I'm going to draw. Okay, so what do I do next? I chose my bread. <laughs> Rachel says, it's interesting realizing how many steps I need to visualize and just making a grilled cheese sandwich. You'd be surprised. There are so many steps. I know. I'm realizing that now, too. I almost wish I didn't choose rice. <laughs> Are you drawing every like panel on a different layer? No, I'm just drawing them on the same layer and then I'll shuffle them around later. Okay, but I'm just like selecting them and stuff. Cool. I'm doing them on different ones, but that's just my personal choice. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Seven Angelic says, hmm, how are you going to show the water ratio, cat? Well, I usually do the finger test, which is when you have rice in a pot, you cover it with just enough water so that when you dip your finger and touch the rice, it reaches your first knuckle. The water level reaches your first knuckle. So that's how I will show a hand water knuckle test. But the step I'm actually worried about right now is how do I show someone washing the rice? I will figure that out when I get there. <laughs> this is good practice on drawing hands. I haven't drawn hands in a while. Hmm. But I'm also like not feeling like drawing them. I'm like, maybe mine will become phantom hands soon. <laughs> Okay, 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 let's see. Now I have to draw a sink. Let us know in the chat what snacks you guys are drawing. We've heard a few, but I'm curious what else people are. Rising Hearing says, since traditional comic pages are in a book format, how do you plan the layout of a vertical scrolling comic page, i.e. webtoons? Is there a standard page size for creating vertical comics? That's a really good question. 
for web comics that you have to scroll through and particularly ones you have to read on a phone, I would just look up traditional phone dimensions and see which one is like a good is a good format for all of them. I mean, all phone, phone dimensions are different, but obviously you can't have it too small. It's better to have it too big than too, too small. But other than that, things are usually a very long vertical strip. So just plan for things to be vertical. And you probably can't thumbnail a whole strip like this, right? You'll probably have to thumbnail it bit by bit, like section by section by section like that. And then I guess eventually you'll get down to the whole strip, right? I hope that answered the question, Rising Kirin. Whatever you said sounded really smart, Kat. Thanks, TT. <laughs> <laughs> I was too focused to listen, but I was like, whatever she's saying sounds very convincing. <laughs> okay, now I have a faucet, water. People will get that to sink, right? And then. Yeah. Maybe. Wow, this requires a lot of concentration, a lot more than I thought. Like in previous draw lungs, I feel like I've been able to kind of like mindlessly go. Maybe it's because I'm not used to doing comics, mm -hmm. but I'm like, it almost feels like I'm doing like a architectural plan or something. <laughs> I'm like yeah. really like rethinking and thinking throughout the whole process. Mm -hmm. Basil is saying, this reminds me of when we had to write instructions for washing your hands as an English assignment. Almost half the class forgot to write that you had to turn off the faucet. That's really funny. I like that. I had to do a similar thing for an animation class, which was like um, waking up in the morning and everyone forgot to say like open your eyes or something like that. It's like, it was like a similar kind of trick, which is funny. <laughs> Okay, now I have to show pour out the water, but not the rice. I'm so sorry I took away toast from you. It's it's okay. <laughs> Here, this is a good case of where color will help me because I will show white for the rice and blue for the water. Pretty Ooh. standard. <laughs> Um, Clara is asking, Kat, are you going to add panels later, later, or will this be freeform? I can decide to add panels later if I want to, but this can be freeform as well, one or the other. I think I'll just keep it freeform because I don't, I'm busy preparing rice. I don't have enough time to draw panels. <laughs> but even if it's freeform, do you still read left to right and top to bottom? Yes. Even if it's freeform, there are still rules to how you read things and how things are clear because i think that's good to know like even though it's free form there's still like logic behind how you're placing things mm -hmm. All right, so my avocado gets scooped onto the spoon, and then from the spoon, it goes into the bowl. Cool. Also, for everyone who's drawing along with us, who's also making instructional comics, the best way to test if your comic works is by having someone else read it and see if they can understand all the steps that you made. Yes. Also, I think we just had a minor glitch where our screens have disappeared. <laughs> As has Clara. It will be figured out in a moment. <laughs> it will be figured out in a moment. If anyone has additional questions, you can go ahead and let us know in the chat and we will try to answer them to the best of our ability. 
And here comes our screens. Thank you, magical mm -hmm. screen goddess. <laughs> okay, so. The toast is being made. The avocado is being scooped into the bowl. Now. One other thing I've realized while doing this is I, I talk aloud to myself a lot <laughs> while doing this. I'm like, I really need to like coax myself through the thing so I'm not like stressed. This is perfect for a draw along where other people are watching you draw. <laughs> it's true. Now people know how I, how I am when I'm stressed out in life. I just talk myself through everything. Mm -hmm. I think my bowl needs to be a bit more shallow. Basil is saying, I'm not sure why, but Kat's drawing reminds me of the Cooking Mama games. I don't know what that is. Do you know what that is? Yes, Cooking Mama on the Nintendo DS, right? <laughs> uh, they're just, yeah, I haven't played Cooking Mama in so long. Probably because... I don't have an up-to-date Nintendo DS anymore. <laughs> I had a DS. I played Nintendogs and that game that came with it, that was really scary. I don't know if anyone knows that game. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> it was kind of like a alien -y, like Halo-y type game. I don't know. Oh, weird. I found it scary, but I kind of liked it. <laughs> Did you have Nintendogs? I feel like that was kind of like the iconic one that everyone had. I did not have Nintendogs. I think because, I don't know, I have real animals. So I didn't, I don't really need Nintendogs to fill that void in my life. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I didn't have any animals. One of my favorite games to play was the... Um, Super Mario Brothers. There were so many levels to that Nintendo game that mm. it's just hours of play. <laughs> oh, I actually had another game. It was the Shark Tales movie game because I really <laughs> like the movie Shark Tales and I got the game and you like went around and played it. <laughs> John Murph is saying, wouldn't it be nice to see an oil painting comic? I've never seen those before. Wow, that would be quite intense and tedious have you ever seen something like that cat i've never seen something like that i've never seen oil i've seen other kinds of paints just not oil that would be ambitious i would love to see that but i would not like to be the one to do that <laughs> i'm trying to think of how to show that i should that you would use a fork to know mash these this pile of avocado You're like i'm thinking of maybe showing a fork and then showing the bowl kind of like with flatter avocado like right now it's like a mound of hard avocado uh -huh. and the fork could then the after would be that it's kind of like flatter and mushier i don't know I think you definitely need to show the process of the fork mashing the avocado and that depends on also your, how well you can render that so if you have let me see. How would I mash? I would hold it like that. So maybe you can have like a fork like that. Mm. And then show the avocado oozing through the prongs of the fork. Does that make Ooh, sense? Okay. Yeah, so that depends on how well you can render that. I'll try my best. <laughs> and just like have maybe another panel showing more oozing avocado, but the avocado is significantly mashed. Like you can see the difference between the whole avocado and the mashed avocado with the hand and the fork. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay. I'm going to try. I might not have a lot, but I have a good attitude. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Emily so. is asking, I mean, maybe you could argue that traditional triptychs are oil comics. They're at least sequential art. Oh my gosh, Emily, I'm so happy that you mentioned that. 
yes, comics have existed for all of history. Any time that there's visual art, there are comics involved. Like if you think of traditional oil paintings in triptychs, or if you think of tapestries, those are all sequential narratives told through visuals. And that's what comics are. How do I hold a fork to mash? Yes. Okay. Who was it? Was it Seven Angelic who asked how I would show the amount of water that should be in the rice? I'm going to try to portray that now. <clears throat> Uh, Neftali is saying, is it possible to take a children's book that has speech bubbles and turn it into a comic? That's I think yes. What do you think, Kat? I think it's possible. It's a different format, though. It's sort of like translating a picture book to film, like making a movie from a book. They're just two different mediums, but there are plenty of storylines that can work in both mediums. Okay, so that's the amount of water I want to show. So that's my little diagram of how to show how much water to put in. <laughs> so long as it reaches the first knuckle of your finger, then that's the right amount of water. I'm going to show that in pink. So this much. We have a question from Vash3 that's saying, can comics be non-linear as far as narrative? Yeah, there yeah. are comics that I can think of like that. Sorry, DP, do you know any comics like that? No, I don't. But I was like, that's an interesting question that I would also have. And I was about to pass it to you. So... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've never read this one, but I've heard that Building Stories by Chris Ware is basically where you build your own story. So it's not one line of a narrative, but depending on what steps you take, it could be a totally different kind of story. So that could be one. Another one I think of is called Here, H-E-R-E, -E, Here. And it shows a building going through decades of time and how it changes. And it's never from old to new, it always shows you at the room at different points of time. Mm. Yeah. Well, you know so much about comics, Kat. I'm very impressed. I've just read so many. <laughs> but honestly, the comics world is so vast that I find myself still being surprised every day. Like there are plenty of other people out there in the world who have read more comics than me. <laughs> yeah, I was looking at the comics stream um, in preparation for this. And I was like astounded at just how much there is out there. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna color the rice a little bit off white so people know that's rice and not just like background color. Oh my gosh, DT, do you see the time? We don't have much time. Oh my God. These streams go by so fast. I literally thought we've been drawing for 15 minutes. Okay, I better hurry it up. I'm like close. Once my avocado is mashed, I just have to season it and put it on the toast. This is taking as long as it would, it would take if you ordered avocado toast at a restaurant in New York. It would take about an hour and a half for it to come out to you. <laughs> Oozing avocado going through the fingers of the fork. 
Yes, please. Have you ever had New York avocado toast? It's fancy. I've never. I would like to one day um, when the pandemic lets up. <laughs> you can come visit me and I'll take you to New York to a place for avocado toast. Yes, please. Okay. Right. <laughs> That's <laughs> look how many steps there are. There's put water in the rice and then hold on. Pour the water out. Make sure the rice doesn't go down the drain too. Pour water back into the rice. You need this much water. So many steps. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's looking great though. Thank you. Okay. I'm just going to copy this and then paste it as a new panel. We have a comment from Soy Tenley that says, at this rate, is it going to be raw eggs on rice? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, that is a thing you eat in certain countries. Like in Japan, people eat raw eggs mixed with rice. Hmm. Okay, the avocado is being mashed. Now I'm going to show... <laughs> Whew, my heart is like racing. I'm like, I need this avocado toast to be done, folks. We have a comment from... Bingo Bing that says, can we create comics without speech bubbles? Absolutely. I mean, I think that's what we're doing right now. There is, There are no speech bubbles because there's no speech at all. Yeah. I think that's kind of a really nice challenge sometimes when you're starting out. Um, I mean, I don't have a ton of experience with comics, but I think it could be very cool to create a comic and have that be a challenge like where you can't create use speech bubbles, how would your comic turn out? What would that look like? How how long does it take for the rice cooker to cook rice? Oh my gosh, I don't even know the exact time. I just press white rice and then whenever it beeps, I can. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like it's it just tells you and it's such a such a treat. I'm just going to say like 20 minutes. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Make fun of me in the comments. I have no idea how long it takes for my rice to cook. <laughs> I'd say like 20, 30 minutes. Yeah. Okay. So that's the amount of time it will take. So the rice is cooking. In the meantime, the egg is frying. There's a lot of heat in the kitchen. Okay, this is my attempt at showing like a mound of avocado turning into like flatter. Rising Kieran says, are you going to add onomatopoeias to your comic? 
Um, I will not because one of the, I don't think either of us are because one of the rules is that we can't use any keyboard symbols, which includes letters and numbers. Right. So um, an onomatopoeia, if people don't know, are kind of like words that are like boom or pow or splash, um, fizz. Hmm. So but there are ways to show sound and onomatopoeia that's not through words. Like for instance, if someone is yelling, right? There's a person yelling. I could just go like this. Gah! And clearly that person is yelling oh. something loud. That's cool. I like that. I like that knowledge that I have now. <laughs> Man, I don't even know how long I cook my eggs for. <laughs> Let's just say five minutes. <laughs> okay. You know what? I forgot to put a bowl and chopsticks in my utensils list, which I will add very quickly right now. Bowl, chopsticks, okay. <sighs> oh no. Emily is saying you could draw the whites going from runny to firm with color. That's yes, true. You could. If I have time, that's a really good suggestion, Emily. Yeah, like the clear, and then it gets white. And you can brown it around the edges if it gets kind of like crispy. Mm. Oh man, we have to do like another stream to finish this avocado toast. <sighs> Copy and then paste. Thank goodness I'm working digitally. If I had to draw this traditionally, I'd have to draw things over and over again. Oh my gosh, I'm drawing everything over and over again. But you have way more things. <laughs> Time. Okay, and then you know it's done when there's music coming out from <laughs> the rice cooker. Yours makes music? Yeah, I know the tune. It goes like da 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 da. That is such an exciting way to be presented with rice. Paste. Oh, oh, shoot. At the end of our comics, we should all like I sh you and I should do a play by play reading through these comics for everyone. Okay. <laughs> because we draw comics so people can read them. So we will read them out loud. <laughs> Bingo says, are there any comics on realism? That's kind of a broad question. Do you mean, are there comics illustrated realistically? Yeah, there are. Where people, I don't know, it looks like hyper-realistic people. I'm sure you can find that in more of the superhero genre or other genres. I don't know. I'm sure they exist, if that's your question. Yes, there is. there are comics in that style. <laughs> For the purposes of time, I'm just going to have people add salt, pepper, and chili flakes to taste. 
Um, for the purpose of time, I'm just going to delete salt and pepper altogether. <laughs> <laughs> I like um, eggs on rice without salt and pepper or any other seasoning. Sure, I do. <laughs> Why is this not? Oh my goodness, what is happening? Oh. Jill says, I bet Kat could play the rice tune in the piano. Probably. <laughs> just like with one hand. Da, 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 da. Probably with just one finger, actually. Bash 3 is saying it might help Deepti to draw some small action lines to help illustrate the hand smashing the avocado. That's true. I'll come back to that. I'm like stressing about getting it done. <laughs> like I need to have all the steps. Otherwise, you're not going to know what to do. Our prop is saying, Kat, if you were to finish the comic all the way, what would be your next step after you draw all the steps? I think I can finish this comic on time. I'm like keeping an eye on the time. So... Watch me. I can I can do this. <laughs> Her answer is you'll see. <laughs> Ooh. Do you know if I have something selected on a layer? How do I duplicate that? Selected on the layer. I would three fingers swipe down and there should be an option to copy. And then the same thing for paste. Swipe down with three fingers and there should be an option for paste. Where swipe down just anywhere on the screen? Yes. Oh, that didn't work. But I think I know what you mean. Hold on. Cool. Oh, what? Where the heck did it go? <laughs> oh, God, this is so frustrating. Um, did you get it? <laughs> uh, sorry. <laughs> I'm so vocal. Oh, I don't know. Okay, you know what? I'm just going to redraw it. It's fine. It's fine. Problem for later. Um, I forgot to add an off option on my oven, my, sorry, my stove. So how would I picture an off button? Just, I don't know, a cancel sign right here. I'm working on a deadline here. I will figure this out later. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're working on a deadline, people. Uh, Duan, Duan, Duane is asking, do you make manga? Well, technically, yes, because manga is literally just a Japanese word for comics. So if Japanese people were to see like, oh, superhero comics or Spider-Man comics, they would say, oh, yeah, that's manga, because it's literally just comics in Japanese. But if you're asking if I draw in the particular manga style, and if I draw right to left, then the answer is no. I draw left to right, like Western readers, Western creators. And um, my style is just, I guess, cartoony. It doesn't look particularly manga.
Man, I keep thinking of more steps. Shame is asking if you want to make comics, how much do I need to simplify my characters and et cetera? I would say that you don't really need to simplify your characters as long as you're willing to draw that character multiple times from different angles. Like you should be very um, comfortable with that character and know its body and mannerisms kind of inside and out so you can draw it multiple, multiple times, but as long as you're comfortable drawing it so many times, it should be fine. But what do you think, Kat? I agree. It really depends on you, the creator, what you want. You can make it hyper-realistic and spend a lot of time making your character very detailed, but you have to understand you have to draw that character many times. So that is up to your discretion. Ta-da, okay. I finally drew the final product. Now I have to color everything so people know what's what. <laughs> oh my god, you did it? Yes, I did it. <laughs> wow. I'm so impressed with you. Thank you. Like running out of space to draw things. <laughs> That's my rice. I will color the bowl too, just in case people don't know what that is. Okay, red bowl. I like the color red. Anything else? Oh, the eggs. Need to color the eggs. Anything else? Maybe color the chopsticks? <laughs> Why not? You have eight minutes. So you can... <laughs> oh, I should color the spatula so people can be aware of when it's being used. Oh, and another thing that maybe goes over people's heads is, how do you present the final product? Maybe the final product is being eaten by a very happy person, or maybe the final product is just here on display where rays of light are beaming from it or something like that. <laughs> Something really important I forgot to mention in this comic is you have to turn the stove off. Ooh, yeah. How not to burn your house down. Yeah. So I'm going to use a bright pink that I have always been using. You know, one of the earliest forms of visual communication I saw, aside from the things you typically think of, like signs and books and illustrations and stuff like that, is one time my mother wanted to leave a note for my father and wanted him to be sure to see it. So she drew a really big eye next to it. And I was like, how is he going to understand that? 
And I guess my dad did understand that. <laughs> but in this case, I'm trying to trying to find a way of saying this is really important. So how would I portray that? I'll just have an arrow pointing at it, a really big, really obvious arrow. That's my way of saying, pay attention to this. I love that story about your mom leaving a note for your dad. Yeah, in my child brain, I thought, how is an I significant of, it's like signifying importance, but I guess my dad got it. <laughs> Married couples know. They communicate well. <laughs> okay. And the spatula is brown. And now I have to color the spatula every time it appears so people know it is that exact spatula. Anything else? Oh, and the last thing I need to color is the olive oil bottle. Oh shoot, I forgot to add the olive oil. Oh yeah, yeah, I thought I was close to being. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm going to read my comic through right now while Deep D is doing any finishing touches. So first I need eggs, olive oil, rice, my utensils, and also a rice cooker. First step is you have your rice cooker, take out the gray pot from the rice cooker. Also get a cup of rice. And just as I'm reading that, I realize I forgot to add a cup in my utensils list. It's okay. I would fix I would fix that later if I had time. Next step, pour the rice into the gray pot that we just took out of the rice cooker. Next, pour water in the rice. Pour out the water, but not the rice. And then pour more water into the rice. Oops. And then you should have this much water in your rice exactly up to a knuckle and you know this is right because there's a green check mark <laughs> <laughs> next put the rice back into the rice cooker press a mysterious button somehow <laughs> <laughs> and 20 minutes later your rice cooker should sing and you will have hot rice Take some of that rice and put it into your red bowl that we saw earlier in the utensils list. Next, turn your stove up high, pour in a few drops of olive oil, crack in an egg, and wait five minutes. After five minutes are up, turn off the stove, put the egg on the rice, and there you have Cat Huang's favorite snack. Nice. <laughs> Brilliant. All right, here I go. Here we have a little toaster that's plugged in. You take a little piece of bread, you pop it in, and you press the button down, as you see with this finger and the green arrow showing down. You should get a, oh shoot, what did I do? Okay. <laughs> you should get a result that looks like this, folks. It's a toaster with a little bit of bread inside of it, some steam coming out that you can see from the little red stuff. And this is showing how long it should be in the toaster, which is five minutes. All right, then you take half an avocado and you scoop it into the spoon. You see it goes from avocado to spoon and then from spoon into bowl. So that's what you have. And then it should look like this, a little bowl full of <laughs> avocado. Then, that little bowl full of avocado, you take a fork and you mash it and you can see that it's mashed because there's a little oozy mashing coming through there, flattening it. Such a good drawing. <laughs> Thanks to you. And then it should turn into this flat mashed avocado 
And you can see the side by side, it goes from like a mound of hard, av hard avocado <laughs> to soft smashed avocado. Then you add salt, pepper, and chili flakes to taste. You mix it with a spoon, as you can see in the rotating position. Then you scoop avocado from the bowl onto toast, the toast that you made mm -hmm. earlier. And then you get avocado toast. Yay! Yay. <laughs> Um, so wow, if anyone asks why making art costs money, let's just show like it took us almost an hour and a half to draw this much in a very kind of like quick, sketchy way. So mm -hmm. art takes a long time, guys. <laughs> yeah, art is work. <laughs> art is work. Thank wow. you for all the love and Thank for you. ours. I can't wait to see all of your guys's. <laughs> Yes, and speaking of which, please join us in the Art Prof Discord in the Art Alongs channel. We would love to see your masterpieces in the Art Alongs channel. So go ahead and get over there. Remember to subscribe to the Art Prof YouTube channel and a big thank you to all of our top Patreon supporters. Oh my gosh, without your support, we wouldn't be able to be here and make instructional stressful comics with you guys. So thank you so much for all of your support and we will see you guys next time. Bye.